What's wrong with Sacramento? There you are. <laughs> Thank you, uh, George, and uh, thanks to the Mil Milken uh, Institute for uh, sponsoring this forum. Uh, I'm, I'm a believer that the fundamental problem uh, is not related to, to the revenues or to the taxes uh, or to the, uh, the differences between the parties. I think the real fundamental problem in this state is the, our capacity to govern and whether or not uh, people who are elected to office are going to be willing to make the tough decisions that solve problems, or whether they think that even by avoiding those tough decisions, they can still somehow survive in office. It really goes to the core of our democracy. I mean, I think our forefathers really intended in our democracy and our ch system of checks and balances that ultimately people would elect leaders who are willing, regardless of their ideologies or differences, would ultimately be able to find consensus uh, and would uh, make decisions based on improving the future of uh, our children and the future of this country. Uh, the, the reality is governing on a budget issue involves some very tough decisions on spending uh, and on taxes. That's the nature of working with budgets. In my own experience, having worked on the budgets uh, in the Congress and when I was in the administration, my own experience, it is dependent, the ability to do these budgets is dependent on trust, trust of the people who are negotiating uh, through a budget, trusting each other, that regardless of their differences, nobody's gonna walk out the door and stab them in the back. Secondly, there's a willingness to put everything on the table, everything on the table, so that you don't exclude things from consideration. You consider everything. Doesn't mean you accept everything, but you at least put it on the table. Thirdly, that you all agree that failure is unacceptable, that for the sake of the country or the sake of the economy, that you have to ultimately arrive at a deal. And then in the end, that you cut a deal. Uh, that, that's my own experience in dealing with the budgets. And I think the good news here is that we're not talking about something that's impossible. It's happened in Washington. I was part of those efforts in 1987 with Ronald Reagan. We developed a deficit reduction package, Republicans and Democrats alike. 1990 with President Bush, we developed a 90 budget agreement, which was a landmark agreement providing about 500 billion in deficit reduction that included both spending and revenues as well as uh, budget disciplines that helped us uh, ultimately balance the budget. Bill Clinton did it uh, in uh, 93 in his economic plan. We didn't have Republican support, but we had to negotiate with the Democrats to try to get that deal done. And even then, we only passed it by one vote. And then in 97, there was a balanced budget agreement between Democrats and Republicans that ultimately resulted in the balanced budget that we enjoyed uh, before these last eight years. Uh, the good news, too, is true in California. If you look at California between 66 and the present, in the first 24 years, 21 budgets were done on time, uh, and three were nearly on time. But if you look at the last 18 years, only four have been done on time. So what I tell the students at our institute is that we govern in this country either through leadership or crisis. If leadership is there and willing to take the risks associated with these issues, then we can avoid crisis or we certainly can put our arms around crisis. But if leadership is not there, then crisis drives issues. And to the case in California right now, it happens to be true in Washington, it's also true here in California, that policy is largely being driven by crisis. A budget and the deficit, and the reality was that, uh, that we have a crisis on our hands and yet the legislature did not uh, really make the decisions that would have dealt with the budget issue in this year. They simply kicked the can down the road. Uh, we have water issues, we have prison issues, we have infrastructure issues, we have education issues. We have a number of issues that very frankly are at a crisis level uh, and are not being dealt with. How does that change? Uh, there's no silver bullet here, I wish there was. Uh, there are a lot of problems in California that led to the, to the uh, situation of dysfunctionality that we have. Part of it is partisanship, 
Part of it is the development of safe districts that uh, force members to the extremes and to, instead of governing from the center. Part of it is term limits and the lack of statesmanship and experience that we need up there. Part of it is the initiative process and the fact that you use the initiative process as a crutch rather than making the decisions themselves. And then part of it is the influence of interests in Sacramento because there's a lot of money involved in politics right now. The point is that in the end, winning is more important than governing and today is more important than tomorrow. Uh, so what's the key? The key is ultimately they're going to have to restore trust. They've got to trust each other in dealing with these issues and wanting to solve problems. Yes, there are some budget reforms that be can be put in place. Uh, our group, California Forward, is supporting some of those reforms. I think the establishment of the rainy day fund was important. I think we need more long-term budgeting rather than year-to-year -year budgeting. We should at least have a two-year budget. We need to have pay-go, which requires people to pay for any additional spending rather than simply adding it to uh, the general fund and to uh, the uh, deficit. Uh, and lastly, we ought, to have uh, we ought to have performance standards to determine how these programs are working. Uh, ultimately, we, we probably need to restructure how we finance things in this state so that uh, each level of government knows what revenues can flow to their particular area, but that's asking for an awful lot. In addition, we need some political reforms. Prop 11 is on the ballot. I support it. I think we need redistricting reform. I think uh, we eventually need an open primary. We need to reform term limits, and we probably need to reform the initiative process. Bottom line, this state is facing some immense challenges and some immense crises. Uh, in the end, we cannot be on the cutting edge of the future if we continue to have dysfunctional government. Mark my words, it will change. It will change because it has to change, and it will either change by virtue of leadership and the people we elect to office, or it'll change because the voters will take matters into their own hands as they did in the recall.